I'm Ed Schultz, co-founder of Relaxation Unlimited and Edie May, The Healthy Living Way. The next time you're ready to exercise, whether you're going jogging or going to your aerobics class, any kind of exercise at all, and you need a little boost, I'd like you to try Edie May's Vitality Essential Oil Blend or Massage Oil Blend. This will give you that kind of boost of energy, vitality that you need in order to get you going. As I said, this comes in two forms, as an essential oil blend and as a massage oil blend. It's made of peppermint, eucalyptus, grapefruit, orange, wintergreen, and spearmint. Now as an essential oil blend, those are the ingredients. As a massage oil blend, all of those ingredients, the essential oils that I just mentioned, are diluted with grapeseed oil and wheat germ oil. Now you should remember to never use an essential oil, even an essential oil blend, straight on your skin. It always needs to be diluted. In any event, just before getting ready to go out, you can put a few drops in a burner or diffuser. You can even put them on a handkerchief, inhale them, that'll get it working in your system give you that little extra boost that you need or you can take some and massage it on your neck your arms your legs uh, your forehead any part of your body and it'll give you the kind of boost the kind of lift that you need in order to have the kind of vitality that you want and that you need now i have another 10 laps before i'm finished see you later I'm Ed Schultz, co-founder of Relaxation Unlimited and E.D. May, The Healthy Living Way. I'm here to talk to you today about basil essential oil. Now basil essential oil has a very, uh, the aroma is sort of like a licorice. Very pleasant, especially if you like licorice, but it can use, be used for a number of different purposes, as can most essential oils. Most essential oils are not just good for one particular thing. They can usually address a number of different health issues. First issue I'd like to talk about is bronchitis, coughs, colds, the flu. What you do with basil oil, again, like all other essential oils, basil oil is very highly concentrated, so you never put it directly on your skin. If you are going to apply it in any kind of topical way, you'd always need to dilute it with some carrier oil, such as sweet almond oil, grapeseed oil, jojoba, sunflower, or even olive oil. What you do when you're going to dilute it is to take about 20 milliliters of the carrier oil and then just put a couple of drops, three, four, five drops of the essential oil, mix it around, and then you can apply it to your skin. But when you're using it for coughs and colds and congestion and bronchitis, the best way to use it would be, for example, in a burner. You put a few drops in the top, then light the candle, and that'll diffuse it throughout the air. Another way of diffusing it without using the burner is to get a, a spray mist bottle like this, put a few ounces of distilled water in it, Put about five drops, five or six drops of basil essential oil in, shake it up real good, and just mist it around the room. That way you can inhale it as you're going about your day. Another way that you can use it to help with the congestion and the colds and the stuffiness is to put a few drops on a tissue or a handkerchief, and you can just hold that and inhale it. Now another one of the interesting uses for basil in particular is on bug bites. If you have a bite, a mosquito bite, a spider bite, an ant bite, something like that, you would just take it, mix it again with some of the carrier oil, and then put it on the bug bite. And you'll find that it'll lessen the pain, and the bug bite, the swelling or whatever, will go down very quickly. And by the way, you can also use it as an insect repellent. Again, if you're going to use it topically, mix it with the carrier oil, 
put it on the various parts of your body that are going to be exposed when you go outside and you'll be fine. Or if you're using it inside, if you have uh, flies or something like that inside and you want to be sure that you keep them away, just use the, the basil essential oil with your distilled water in the mister. Another use for basil is aches and pains, muscle aches. Again, you would use it with the carrier oil to massage the particular areas of your body where you find you have those aches. Now, one other use for basil is it's very good to help increase skin and hair tone. Very good for your hair, very good for your skin. So if you're going to use it for your skin, again, use the carrier oil. Or another way that you can do that is you can take something like um, you take something like a body lotion or a body gel, mix a few drops of the essential oil in with that, and then put it on your face, uh, your skin, anywhere in your body. Or if you're using a shampoo, you can put several drops of it in the shampoo, put it in your hair, and then you'll be good to go. Again, it helps the quality of your hair and it helps the tone of your skin. If you'd like to I'm Ed Schultz co-founder of Relaxation Unlimited and Edie May, The Healthy Living Way. I'm here to talk to you today about bergamot essential oil. Now bergamot, like all of the other essential oils, is highly concentrated, so you should never put it directly on your skin. It should always be diluted with a carrier oil, such as sweet almond oil, grapeseed oil, jojoba, sunflower, or even olive oil. What you do in order to dilute it is to put about 20 or 30 milliliters in a small bowl like this and put five or six drops of the essential oil in and then mix it up. You then can put it on your skin. Now there are a number of different uses for bergamot. For one thing, it's good as an antidepressant. It has a citrusy smell so it can help calm your nerves and relax you. It also is good to increase your circulation, give a boost to your hormones and to your metabolism, so it can actually help you to lose weight. The flavonoids that are in bergamot essential oil are what actually help you to relax. But it's also a very good antibiotic, a disinfectant. You can spray it around the room. For example, if you get a spray mist bottle, Put a couple of ounces of distilled water in it, put five or six drops of the essential oil in, shake it up very good because oil and water don't mix, then spray it around the room and you'll inhale the fumes as you're going about your day and it'll help to relax you. It'll also help to disinfect the room. Another way that you can help yourself relax using bergamot is to use a burner. You put a few drops in the top of the burner, light the candle, and again the aroma goes throughout the air. Now one of the things that bergamot is especially good for is skin care. If you put, again, mix the bergamot with some carrier oil, if you have eczema or psoriasis, it's very good for those kinds of conditions. You just put some, mix it in with the carrier oil, and rub it onto your skin. Now you can also put a few drops in your bath water. That will help to relax you as well. And it will also have beneficial effects on your skin as you're bathing. Now a couple of cautions about bergamot, because it is a citrus-based oil. It should not be used on very sensitive skin. And you should also avoid it if you're pregnant.
I'm Ed Schultz, co-founder of Relaxation Unlimited and EDMA The Healthy Living Way. I'm here today to talk to you about lavender essential oil. Now lavender essential oil is perhaps the most versatile and commonly used of all the essential oils available. The name lavender comes from the Latin word lavare, which means to wash, because ancient Romans used to use lavender oil in their bath water to help them relax and also because lavender oil has a disinfecting quality. So one of the most common uses of lavender oil is relaxation. For example, all you need to do is open the bottle of essential oil and by the way, EDMA essential oils all have a Euro dropper which is a special kind of dropper so that you can release just one or two drops at a time. Just rub some of it in the palm of your hands, like this, and on your finger. Maybe put some on the back of your neck, on your temples, or behind your ears. Or you can just rub it in your hands and inhale it several times. And it does have a very calming effect. You can also rub it on the bottom of your feet just before going to bed. Or you can put a few drops on your pillowcase, put a few drops in a handkerchief, and leave that next to your pillowcase. You can also take a plastic misting bottle, put some distilled water in it, put several drops of lavender essential oil in that, shake it up and then mist it around your room. Or if you have a burner like this, you can put a few drops of essential oil there, light your candle and it'll help to diffuse throughout the entire room. So it can be used for aromatherapy as well as using it for its disinfecting qualities. For example, if you get a bug bite of some kind, an insect bite, let's say from an ant or a mosquito bite, put a drop or so of lavender essential oil on that and rub it in and you'll notice a few things will happen. One is that the pain or the itch will subside. Also, it'll disinfect the wound so it'll kill any germs or bacteria that may be there. And you can often find that the wound itself will heal a lot quicker than it normally would. So it can be used for bug bites, it can be used for cuts, abrasions, anything like that. You can also use it, as we're, as we're talking about relaxation, you can use it as a massage oil. Of course you wouldn't use it directly for massage. Now that's one of the things that's very important about any kind of essential oils. Generally, they are so highly concentrated that it's not good to put it directly on the skin. Now, lavender oil is an exception. Lavender oil can usually be used directly on your skin. But if you're going to use it for massage, what you do is to dilute it in a carrier oil. For example, this is sweet almond massage oil. You would put in a 20, 30 milli, excuse me, a 30 milliliter bottle like this, you'd put maybe four or five drops or more if you want it stronger and then mix it up and you can use it to massage your hands if you have arthritis or rheumatism, uh, any sore muscles in your arms or your legs, your back, your neck. You can use it for a full body massage for your partner, for your wife, your husband, even for your children. Lavender oil has been found to have a very calming effect on children. I've even heard about some school teachers and workers in hospitals who put lavender oil in a diffuser, let it diffuse around the air, around the room, and it helps to calm patients, it helps to calm rowdy students. Another way that you can use lavender essential oil is, for example, this is Edie May Natural Lavender Relaxation Bubble Bath. It's a natural product that has lavender oil in it. So you put some of this, a few squirts of this, into your bath and not only do you get foaming, relaxing bubbles, but the aroma from the lavender helps you to relax even more, even more deeply. Another product that we have that has lavender oil in it is this liquid hand soap because of the disinfecting qualities that lavender oil has. You could also use a lavender aromatic body oil. This is a fragrance oil. It's, it's a man-made product, but just the, the aroma, the scent of lavender, is something that does have that calming effect. 
if you're soaking your feet. And we do recommend that you soak your feet for relaxation. Put a few drops of lavender essential oil into the water. Not only will it help to increase circulation in your feet and your legs, but it'll also have that calming effect that we're talking about. So the next time you're uptight, you feel stressed, you want to relax, lavender essential oil is one of the best things that you can use. It's a very natural product, there are no side effects whatsoever, and it'll help you to get that kind of relaxation and rest that you want, that you need, and that you deserve. We'll see you again another time.